biggest adventure yet. Two hours and 20 minutes over open water in Little Islands on our way to Stella Maris, Long Island, Bahamas. Ready for an adventure? Okay, everybody ready? Yeah. 2441 Mike is at uh, the new Atlantic with Information Yankee. Looking to pick up our uh, VFR flight plan to Mike Yankee, Lima, Sierra. So 2441 Mike, sir, ground. We actually don't do VFR clearances per se. Um, I can get you a squat code if you want. Yeah, I'll take the squat code. Thank you. She said uh, Mike Yankee, Lima, Sierra. Mike Yankee, Lima, Sierra. And flight plan is filed. Squawk 2342, Palm Beach is on 123.62. Squawk code is 2342, Palm Beach is 123.62, and I'll uh, attempt to open flight plan with them. 41 Mike. Stuart Ground, Aztec 2441 Mike is ready to taxi. Aztec 241 Mike, runway 12, taxi via Alpha. 12, taxi via Alpha, 41 Mike. Looks like we got a flight restriction for a rocket launch today. So once we get in the air, maybe I'll look up the information. You never know, maybe they'll shoot a rocket right as we're taking off. We've tried that before. I'm not getting my hopes up. Yeah, yeah, we have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, a rocket, and then it's never there. The one time I saw a rocket, I was uh, all by myself in you the plane. Were, we were going up to Sebastian, and me and the kids were driving to pick you we up. We could see it, too. We yeah. could see it, too, but we were in the car. You guys are in the car, and I didn't have the cameras hooked up on the plane because it was just a little maintenance flight. Oh. And uh, so it would have been cool to show everybody the rocket, but it was it right just, there. Yeah. It didn't work out. I'm gonna actually have you stick those in my purse or in your purse. Yes, please put those my. in my purse. <laughs> my purse is way down there in the stuff full, so I'll do this right here. It'll be fine. Off for an adventure. This is definitely a big adventure. Our biggest adventure yet. Two hours and 20 minutes over open water in Little Islands on our way to Stella Maris, Long Island, Bahamas. Stewart Tower, Aztec 2441 Mike is holding short runway 12 and ready for departure. Aztec 2441 Mike, Stewart Tower, turn left on course. Cherokee upwind's going to be in the right pattern. Runway 12, clear for takeoff. Left on course with Cherokee in the pattern in sight. Uh, runway 12, clear for takeoff. 41 Mike. Be careful. Love you guys. Love you. Love you. All right. Gage is in the green. Fuel flows are good, 55, 65, tap the brakes, and gear coming up. Aztec 2441 Mike, Catech Palm Beach Departure, you have a great morning. Palm Beach Departure, 12362, Mike, appreciate your help. Palm Beach Departure, Aztec 2441 Mike is uh, two miles to the east of Stewart. Uh, en route to Mike Yankee Lima Sierra, and we'd like to uh, pick up flight following if possible. 41 Mike, radar contact five miles southeast of uh, Stewart Airport. Maintain VFR. Aztec 2441 Mike, maintain VFR. And uh, for flight services, can you give me the squat code for the or the radio code for them? Try 222 or 224. I'm going to try 222 now. I'm going to go over and talk to them. I'll return here. 41 Mike. Flight services radio, Aztec 2441 Mike. Aztec 2441 Mike, man, radio Radio, this is Aztec 2441 Mike. We're just uh, just off of Stewart, and we're looking to pick up our VFR flight plan to Mike Yankee Lima Sierra. We were given squat code 2342 by Stewart already. Remember, 2441 Mike, uh, flight plan towards Mike Yankee Lima Sierra has been activated at this present time. Power reports have requested. To the east of your destination, there is a Miami Center with advisory three issues, two if any of your thunderstorms. Uh, details are up on the quest. You squat code still on the way out, only for the way back. Power reports have requested. Have a safe flight. Good day. Uh, flight plan is filed and active. We appreciate the thunderstorm warnings, and uh, we're going to return back to Palm Beach. Appreciate your help. Palm Beach, Aztec 2441 Mike is climbing through 3,600 for 7,500 and back on frequency. 441 Mike, Roger. So we opened up our flight plan. I heard the guy say it yeah. was active. It's active. Well, we'll find out. <laughs> My understanding is if he says it's active, then it's active. But he says we only need a squat code for the way in, not for the way out. Which we knew that, but we wanted flight following, so you need a squat code for that. So. Yep. So since we're going over, like, report. Grand Bahamas, and they have an airspace, do we have to call them, or since you're on flight following, 6, they transfer 000. you? It says on the map that 6,000 is the area. So if we're flying over it, you don't have to contact them? 32, 25, nope. Oh man, the land is disappearing behind us. It is. Uh, so tiny. It's like a teeny city. That teeny city is Palm Beach. <laughs> it's not very tiny. Well, the weather is pretty good. Not great. 
but pretty good. This has been a long this time is, coming. This is as good as the weather has is possibly going to be for this area and this time of year. Yeah. We've got just some little puffy clouds all the way over, a couple scattered thunderstorms that should be easy to avoid. As far as projected weather in July, uh, it is hard to beat what we've got today, and it's projected to be good when we return in uh, four days. This should give us lots of glimpses of the water uh, from, uh, from our perch up at 7500 uh, through the clouds. And uh, I planned the flight for a very scenic, uh, the little waves of sand and variations in color over the water as we get to the east side of Grand Bahama. So I'm really hoping that uh, as we continue on, we'll be able to show you some real Bahamian sky views over the nicer parts of the water. Not that any of it isn't nice, but uh, on the satellite, this is particularly nice. And I think this will be a good flight, and I hope the cameras are rolling for us. As long as the batteries don't die. Yeah, hopefully we'll be able to get you some good stuff. Maybe. I've, I can control it from AJ's phone with the app, the GoPro app, but it doesn't always connect. So if I turn it off, there's a chance it may, <laughs> it may not, not back turn on. back on. So I have just lately just been letting them roll, see what we got. Yeah. <laughs> yep, but we've been waiting for Long Island for a while. It's supposed to be our spring break trip. And then weather, an autopilot died, AJ got a little bit sick, so that was canceled. Yeah, we had the trifecta of problems last time between illness, plane problems, and weather problems, and we had to cancel. And then we moved it to May, and then there was a massive storm the whole time, just yep. sitting over Four days of solid rain and thunderstorms. So then we had to cancel that one, and now third time's the trouble. <laughs> Let's hope they all don't go like this. Well, it. soon it's going to be winter, and the storms aren't as crazy. Thank we'll just have to go goodness. a lot during the winter. Okay, so we talked about it before, but uh, if we're going down, how do you pop your side window, Jack? You remove the cover, turn the handle, and push the door. Perfect. And then what happens to the door? Up and flies out. It flies out, you let it fall. All right, if we're going to do... If we're going to go and have to make a water landing, then what happens to the life raft? Um, Mom gets it in and she throws it out the door. Good. Mom gets it, throws it out the door as we get close. Perfect. And if we have to get out of the plane, where are we going to meet? At the life raft. At Good the time. life raft. But if, the, if you can't see the life raft and the plane is kind of floating, what part of the plane are we going to meet at? Tail. At the tail, right side or left side? Right side. Right side by the tail, perfect. A plus on your test. Good job. Not that I want you to be afraid of that stuff, but that is the plan. We've been over the plan, and you guys did excellent on your test. So, if we have to, that's how we're going to play it. Do you see on the map here uh, the big island right ahead? Yeah. We're going to start to see that on the horizon real shortly. We're starting to see the clouds up ahead, that little line. I bet the island is right underneath those clouds. Do you remember the name of the island we went to first? Grand Bahama. Grand Bahama was the first island we ever went to. And we're, we're going to be going over the top of Grand Bahama first today. And then we're going to be turning to the southeast. And remember, we don't always get traffic out here. So when we're flying in the Bahamas, because there's not always ADSB, which is what shows those little planes, you got to be watching for traffic to make sure we don't bump into anybody, right? Okay. It's 7,500 feet and it's still 80 degrees outside. It's still much warmer than it was when we were doing the poker run. Yeah, that was rough. It was really warm, but it was fun to, to do all the play cards. Yep, for sure. Even though we didn't get the greatest hand in the world. No, we're going to lose the poker run. That's all right. There's an island for sure. There's Grand Bahama right there to the right. And that little st spit of land sticking out is where we stayed. That's West End. Uh, here's where we're at. We are halfway uh, across the Atlantic from Stewart uh, down to the first point that we've got entered in the map here for a southeasterly turn on the east end of uh, Grand Bahama. And we can see Grand Bahama right off our wing. And we can see the West End Airport, and we can see Old Bahama Bay right there on the beach. Uh, if anybody's looking for a quick, easy flight, that, you know, for us, that's a, a less than 30-minute flight from Stewart. So if you're looking for your first Bahamian flight, somewhere that's easy to get to, relatively qu close to work out those jitters, and has a very nice uh, place for accommodations right nearby with a restaurant at the resort, 
in Old Bahama Bay. I wouldn't hesitate for a second to recommend that as a first flight. That totally worked out for us and our family. So if you're watching our videos try to help to try to help you plan your own videos for flying to the Bahamas keep West End in mind and just also keep in mind that's a restricted airport so you do have to call ahead and it's make perfect. arrangements uh, with the uh, with the staff on the field but all the but instructions exactly how to do it is in the uh, the AOPA Bahamas flight book and so uh, and we also made a video for flying into uh, to West End so hopefully you find that helpful when you're you're watching this video if you're looking for a first stop in the Bahamas that's a great place to go and we're going to continue along Grand Bahama and then turn south and really looking forward to seeing these uh, lines in the sand as we get a little bit uh, more south of Grand Bahama I've dreamed about seeing them for over a decade and today's the big day where I finally get to fly over them it's going to be awesome before one might contact Miami Center one three four point two Miami Center, 134.2, for one mic. Miami Center, Aztec, 2441 mic, it's 7,500. 2441 mic, roger, maintain VFR, 340, 3005. 3005, for one mic. All right, we're continuing on. We are directly north of Freeport now, so right off of our right wing tip, we're seeing uh, city of Freeport. But uh, we're going to continue along the north side of Grand Bahama, make our right-hand turn. We'll keep uh, Great Abaco Island off of our uh, left, and then we're going to continue southeast, and we're going to pick up several different, several additional island chains along the way, uh, passing over, passing over uh, Eleuthera. Uh, we're going to pass directly over the Rock Sound Airport, and then continue along south uh, towards uh, Stella Maris in Long Island. Uh, we're also going to see off of our left Cat Island along the way, which is another one real popular with pilots as one of the out islands. Uh, but there's our entire route, and we'll you know include as many clips as possible along the way. But we're about to make our southeast turn on the east end of Grand Bahama and then uh, continue on towards Rock Sound. Uh, that should put us directly over the, uh, the cool sand, um, I don't know, what do you call it, sand structures where you get the changes in depth and watercolor. I'll, I'll Google know. it and I'll put it on there <laughs> after the fact. <laughs> what we'll see is the undulations in the sand as it goes from uh, more and less deep. And uh, if you look at the satellite uh, pictures between uh, the east end of Grand Bahama and Rock Sound, you'll see the area I'm talking about where it looks like tiger stripes in the sand. It's pretty cool. I can't wait to fly over it. What is this one? We've passed it when we were doing the... That one right over there? That's Great Sail the Island. Flight night. There you go. Great Sail Island has always been special to me since uh, I was on a commercial flight. And the first time I ever flew over the Bahamas, uh, that island, it just looks so cool from up in the air. I still remember just looking out that window on the commercial plane and telling myself one day I'm flying over that island. We, we uh, checked that box with our flight uh, 19 recreation about a year and a half ago. Yeah, yeah it was a long, a long time ago as far as our videos go, one of our first videos. But, uh, but when we recreated the Flight 19 flight, we went right over the top of Great Sail at a relatively low altitude. That was an awesome day. It was but, uh, pretty good spot for fishing, from what I understand. Actually, Great Sail Island, we actually use a clip of that in our intro. Yeah. The old intro that we throw up on some of our videos, it uh, it includes a big clip of us flying pretty low over the top of Great Sail Island. I should update that. I still like the song, though, that I found. It's just like a little chunk of music inside of a song that I like the little, yep. the little beat. I know you do. Yeah, if I hear a song... It's got woos or claps or snaps. Or I'm immediately like saving it to use later <laughs> because I like it so much. <laughs> There's not enough songs with woos in it. Are those islands out there? Or is that just shadows of clouds? Islands. You can see them right there. Just uninhabited little yeah, spits let's figure of out what those islands are. Part of Treasure Key. Now, Treasure Key is the northern part of Great Abaco Island. Oh, I love doing this stuff. Two, AJ. Me too. Thanks for being awesome and for dragging me along. You're welcome. <laughs> Even though I'm pretty awesome that I was riding a scooter in the BBI. 
no, you are awesome. We are off-roading those things. I was a little nervous. Sand all over. It was like riding a scooter on a slip and slide. I'd never ridden a scooter or anything like that. I've always only ridden on the back of AJ's motorcycle, so I was excited to try it and a little nervous. But everyone else, AJ's parents, both have their motorcycle license, so they've all had some experience of riding a two-wheel thing that moves fast. <laughs> but it was fun. Well, you know how to ride, you know, the electric scooters when you're not crashing into no. your daughter. I crashed and burned on that. <laughs> the very first day we got the electric scooters, we were trying them out, and so Shelby was on, like, just her regular bicycle, and I was down the street and I came flying as fast as it would come and she decided just to pull her bicycle out right in front of me and I tried to stop but it was going really fast so I hit her <laughs> yeah, and you. we both Shelby only had just plastered her. a little tiny scratch because I hit her bicycle but I went flying off the ground and it's been a few years and I still have the markings of my road rash let me get a video of this this is phenomenal straight down the rocky edge of Grand Bahama. 4,900 feet, light to pick up IFR to Fort Pierce. Six, two, Why would he need an IFR on a day like today? Well, usually you fly IFR on the way back. I didn't hear where he was going or what he asked for, but if he's saying IFR, we're flying IFR on the way back, just so they have the squat code, we're being tracked, and we don't get into trouble. Yeah. So I'm not really an expert, but I have talked to several people that do this often, and the suggestion from them I'm especially grateful to Kevin Phelps, who's my instructor. Uh, but uh, the suggestion was go over VFR and come back IFR. And that just makes your life easy. We did that the first trip to West End and back, and it worked perfect. And so we're going to continue with that suggestion until we get a little more experience coming in and out of the islands. There's other ways to do it, and you can go VFR on the way back by all means, but, uh, but I just want not to have problems with paperwork and government agencies and things that would compromise my pilot certificate. I just want to play by the rules in the way they want me to do it. And apparently, the easiest way to do that, to stay out of trouble and make sure it goes well, is VFR in, IFR out. And so that's how we're playing it. But the, the reason, you know, just to answer Kelly's question, if somebody's asking IFR, likely it's, it's a commercial flight and they're going in or out of Freeport or Nassau where you can do IFR. You can't do IFR to any of the other airports in the Bahamas. And, uh, or they're going back to the U.S. and they just want to simplify the process. So we can pick up IFR when we're in Long Island, even though we're not at Nassau nope. or Freeport? No, we have to you take have to off start VFR, VFR then in the air. get up to altitude, call up Miami uh, or flight service, and open up your your uh, IFR flight plan, and then you continue IFR on the way back. Well, this time at Some least we have, up NASA too. have a little bit more time before the ATIS to get prepared. When yep. we left from West End, though, yeah. even though it's a quick flight, you got in the air and AJ was immediately, immediately on the ATIS. Now, it also warns you that that occurs in the AOPA book. It says, you know, make sure that you get your squat code before crossing the ATIS, which means you have to do it immediately as you leave that airport. I mean, you you took off, you turned, and you were on the radio. Yep. Uh, but we are about to make our southeastern turn for our next big leg towards Rock Sound. All right, here comes our turn. Turn into the southeast. All right, right off the wing there is Treasure. There's an airport in Treasure Key, right? Yep. Maybe that will be our next one. You never know. It's that certainly didn't take possible. That, it didn't take that long. I mean, it's no. not much more than West End was. And we're starting to see the sand formations right below us. It's and beautiful. it's just going to get better and better. All right, we got an airport just ahead, southwestern tip of Abaco. Of Great Abaco. Which and that is? airport is Sandy Point. M Y A S. My is it ass. a bit of public use? <laughs> <laughs> yes, my ass is public. <laughs> oh, nice. What do you see? The beach. We were just talking about that we should come over here next. All right, right out here to the east of us, we've got Great Abaco Island. And as we turn, this is the southern fork. Uh, there's two, two portions of the island that split down at its southern portion. 
and we're looking right at Great Abaco straight ahead. November 2441 Mike, contact Nassau Approach 121.0. NASA approach 121.0, 41 Mike. NASA approach Aztec 2441 Mike at 7500 uh, VFR to Stella Maris. 2441 Mike, NASA approach, altimeter at NASA 3007. 3007, 41 Mike. Go dogs. Go dogs. <laughs> Mike, contact. <laughs> Three eight miles. Yeah. The first thing we got on the radio ever was a go dogs. <laughs> that was cool. That is the first shout out we have ever had as we fly around over the radio. So good. If you're gonna be watching this video and you're the person that called out go dogs, please comment and let us know. You, you made his year. Made my whole year. Yeah, that was fantastic. No, those clouds are gonna be a problem. So can we change since we're VFR? Yeah, we can. And what is this island that we're approaching now? This is a Luthra. Oh, there's the window where it goes from light blue to dark blue in the middle of a Luthra. Yes. That is the window. Uh, where there's a bridge over the top of it. It's really shallow to really deep on just that little tiny bit. Yep, on the left side is the east side. That's where it goes to the deep portion of the Atlantic. Yeah. Well, whenever we land there, we will definitely check it out. The airport that you're seeing right now is north of Luthra. That's an airport of entry, so one day we need to land there. Sounds good to me. Beautiful. There's another one coming up that we have to land at, which is Governor's Harbor. I've straight heard of ahead. That. I've heard of that one. That sand over there was the area I wanted to fly over, but because of that cloud, we had to deviate. But this sucker right here made this us deviate. This big cloud made us deviate. <laughs> That's all right. It's still beautiful here. And we got just beaches and islands all around us. Pretty sweet, huh? Yeah. We've got rock sound right over there. Coming around. So right at the end of that hook of land is the airport. All right, final leg. Yep. Last little waypoint. 40 minutes to go. We'll be landing. You can see the islands actually pretty clearly because of the dark blue water, and then it's just like bright blue highlighter that like goes around the islands, you know? That was always my favorite highlighter color. That bright blue one. The bright blue highlighter. Yep. I'm more of a pink kind of person. Are there more islands coming out my side? I think so. I think you're going to have uh, Cat Island You have eventually. a big island coming up out your side. You've got all of Cat Island coming out your window. So how do you close your flight plan. We're either going to close it from the air if I have Miami on the radio before we right. get rid of them. I didn't know if like you would lose them. We do lose them. We say we'll cancel flight following, close flight plan, uh, or we get on the ground and we have to, to call them on the phone. phone. Call. Yeah, but I cannot forget to do that. I'll help you remember. I just didn't know if we would still have radio contact with Miami by the time we make it to Long Island, you know. So as we're getting closer, the plan will be to try to cancel the flight plan in the air. That would be the preference. And then so we, we get on... get busy with customs and forget. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're going to announce in the air on uh, 122.8, you know, your call sign, your location, and your intentions. What is 122.8? What does that go to? 122.8 is the common air traffic frequency for the Bahamas. So all of these little uncontrolled airports, you announce your intention on 122.8 uh, for pilots in the area. It's like the They're all towered airports yep. in the U.S. You just say, hey. Are all uncontrolled airports. You have to announce your intention. So, you know, it'll be in November 2441 Mike. We're 10 miles to the north of Stella Maris, inbound, full stop, straight in approach, runway 13. That's how it's going to go. Uh, now the winds are on a one zero zero, and Stella Maris has one three and three one. Uh, so we're, you know, it unless there's traffic in the area of Stella Maris, we're going to skip the pattern and just go a straight in approach because we're pretty well lined up with the runway. But it, generally in the Bahamas, all the traffic is left pattern, and they do encourage you to do a, a full pattern, uh, especially if there's somebody else there that needs to see it, just make sure you see and avoid. But um, if we don't hear anybody else flying into Stella Maris or there's no conflicts, we'll just do a straight in. Because we're basically going straight there Yeah, because anyway. we're lined up with the runway already. Right. So Especially since, around. you know, gas is $11 a gallon there. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was like ten seventy-five, but basically 11 Flying an Aztec around the pattern, you know, that's going to cost me another $50. <laughs> You're not wrong. That looks like a carnival stack. 
So maybe uh, it's a carnival island. Have we actually been there? We did carnival for a while with the whole family. And they went to their own them. island in the Bahamas, and the way that that beach looks with the rocks off on the south side, and the white beach next to it with the sandy spit going up, I'm pretty sure I walked that entire beach. That's where we were trying to snorkel and kept going out of the snorkel zone. They kept blowing oh, the whistle at me. Yes. <laughs> yes, I remember that. It's been so many years now, but yeah. All the all they the good shells and stuff were right outside the snorkel zone. I was going out there. They were very irritated with you. Well, I apologize to that lifeguard, but <laughs> I had to go. Well, you didn't mean to. You just had kept, to. You kept just swimming, and then I kept swimming under the fence. <laughs> it wasn't a fence. It was like a buoy. Yeah, well, bullies, fence, whatever. You're probably right. I'm pretty sure that's That does it. look like a red... All right, we'll have to check. Little San Salvador Island. If that's a carnival island, I'm pretty sure that I have been there. We needed a quick, easy cruise, and uh, that was it. And they had, uh, they have ice cream available 24 hours a day on the carnival boats. <laughs> so if you can put up with the chaos... <laughs> because Royal Caribbean stopped doing they ice did. cream. Royal Caribbean the made their ice cream limited by hours, and I will not tolerate it. <laughs> It, uh, AJ, when I want ice cream on a cruise, that's very important to me. So Carnival got my business that time. <laughs> At least for that that one trip. <laughs> if Royal Caribbean wants me back, then they better make their ice cream 24 hours a day. They may have. It's been so many years that we've even looked, so they may have changed it back. AJ loves his soft serve, and he is a master at it. I can it make me a cone. Perfect spiral. Ten feet tall. And, and it won't fall down. There's your island, bud. Cat Island. I felt like there was a Cat Island in the Gulf of Mexico. Maybe so. November 2441, Mike. Turn 20 degrees left vector for traffic. 20 degrees left vector for traffic, 41 Mike. There. Yeah. It's way down there. Not an issue? No, but that's the only one there. Miami Center, Aztec 2441, Mike. Traffic in sight and no factor. November 2441, Mike, Roger. Resume on navigation. Resume on navigation, 41 Mike. Miami Center, Aztec 2441, Mike, is initiating a VFR descent to Stella Maris. Uh, would like to close my VFR flight plan. November 2441, Mike, your VFR flight plan has been closed. Radar service terminated. Squawk VFR, frequency change is approved. Good day. Uh, Squawk VFR and frequency change approved. Appreciate your help, 41 Mike. Excellent. One less thing to do on the ground. So we should be flying over the resort we're staying at and the Columbus Monument. Yep. Stella Maris, Aztec 2441 Mike is one, two miles to the north inbound for full stop runway one, three. We'll be making a straight in approach, Stella Maris. I'm still combined with Stella Maris. Uh, can I have your departure point? And are you staying with us or just come and click custom? Uh, we're going to be staying with you. We're going to get transportation over to uh, Cape Santa Maria. Uh, and our departure point was Stewart, which is Sierra Uniform Alpha in Florida. Roger. Yeah, so right now the field we get wind for the southeast at about 13 miles per hour. Pressure set in 30.09. And when you land on one tree, you need to come to the very end of one tree, the third left front turn, and I'll be on the rumpy tree with the path. Roger that. We'll be landing 13, altimeter 3009, and we'll be looking for you where to park. 41 Mike. And we can see it. Pretty sweet. It's beautiful. Columbus Monument. Here's the resort where we'll be staying. Cape Santa Maria. Cape Santa Maria. Here's the beautiful water. Beautiful. 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 Nice. <laughs> oh, it's bright blue. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. Stella Maris, Aztec 2441 Mike's at 1,000 feet, 5 miles to the northeast inbound for full stop runway 13 Stella Maris. Stella Maris, Aztec 2441 Mike, 3 mile final runway 13 Stella Maris. Oh, phenomenal approach. So it's cool. So pretty. All right, we're going to plunk it right down. Good stuff right there at the end. You got it. Woohoo! Woo! Good job, AJ. That view was so beautiful. Oh, disgusting! Bird pooped on my window.
<laughs> right as we landed. And there's blood on the window. Did we hit a bird? Oh, look at that. Yeah, I think we did. Look at, Mom, there's blood on your window. We made it. Long we made Island it. Bahamas. Yeah. Now to clear customs. What you doing, AJ? Cleaning bird off the plane. Shelby was right. We hit a small bird. I don't know if he was small. I, I thought it was poop for a second, and I saw a little it was bit poop. of blood. And it's bird poop and blood all over the place. And I saw a little bit of blood, and I was like, ew, bird hit on it. What does it smell like, AJ? It smells like fish. <laughs> Rest in peace.